Hello students. In the last video, we learned how to expand perfect squares quickly. So in this video, we're going to go the other way. And if we're given, a, given an expression that looks like this, how we then can convert it into a perfect square. So let's have a bit of a think about, a bit of a discussion about all of this before we get on and actually try some. So for example, if I have an expression of the form y plus 3 all squared, that can be written as y squared plus 2 times y times 3 plus 3 squared. And that all simplifies to y squared plus 6y plus 9. So the question is, if we're given this expression here, how do we get it back to that? Well, what we have to do is start with that expression, which we have here, and turn it into the perfect square. So what we have to figure out is if we're given the expression y squared plus 6y plus 9, how do we then turn that into y plus 3 all squared? So in particular, a perfect square either looks like that or looks like that. And if an expression does fit either of those patterns, we can then write it as a perfect square. So the first step is trying to figure out, for example, does this fit that pattern just there? So here's how you have to think about it. So if it fits the pattern, that's a squared, that's b squared, and that's 2ab. So if it does fit the pattern, if a squared is x squared, a is equal to x. If it does fit the pattern, b squared is 9, so b is 3. And then finally, 2ab, which is the middle term, has to equal 6x. Well, 2 times x is 2x times 3 is 6x. It does fit the pattern. So therefore, we know that we can apply the rule for perfect squares and say, therefore, x squared plus 6x plus 9 is just equal to x plus 3 all squared. OK, let's go ahead and actually try that on a couple of questions. So each of these requires basically two stages. Stage one, does it actually fit the pattern of a squared, in this case, a squared minus 2ab plus b squared? And if it does, then write it as a perfect square. So let's do a bit of writing for this one. Later on, you might be able to do, do these mentally but it helps if you actually write out the middle steps to begin with. So if it fits the pattern, a squared is equal to x squared. So therefore, a must be x. b squared equals 4. So therefore, b has to equal 2. And the middle term has to be 2ab. Well, let's see what 2ab is. Well, 2ab is 2 multiplied by x multiplied by 2. 2 times 2 is 4 times x is 4x. And it fits, oops, and it fits the pattern. So we know that that is a perfect square. And we can say, therefore, it equals, and now it's just going to equal, in brackets, a minus b, because of the subtract there. So it's going to be x minus 2 all squared. And you can, of course, uh, check that by expanding this out, and it, you'll get back to that expression just there. Let's try this one. Well, if it is a perfect square, a is equal to x, b is equal to 6, and 2ab is going to be 2 times x times 6. Well, 2 times 6 is 12 times x is 12x. But I have 8x in the middle, so that one can't be factorized as a difference of squares. Now, it might be possible it can be factorized another way, but not by using this particular pattern. OK, I'd like you to have a go, please, at the other two questions on your own. So good luck. OK, let's see how you went. So is this? Um, a perfect square is the first question. Well, if it is, a equals x, b equals 4, since that's b squared, and 2ab 
equals 2 times x times 4, which is 8x, but I've got a 12x, therefore we can't factorize that using perfect squares. Let's see if we have any more luck with the second one. Well, if this is a perfect square, a equals x, b equals 5, since 25 is b squared, 2ab is 2 times x times 5 equals 10x. Okay, well, it does fit. We can say, therefore, x squared plus 10x plus 25 equals x plus 5 all squared. Okay, in the next video, we're going to do the same sort of thing, but with slightly more complicated expressions. Okay, we'll see you there shortly.